How do you upload FT8 contacts to Parks on the Air? Arthritis and operating ham radios. And let's help pick an antenna for a viewer coming up this time on Mailbag Monday. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike. If you have amateur radio related questions for me, shoot me an email. I would love to hear from you. K8MRD at iCloud.com. We've got three great things to talk about, so let's dive right in. This first viewer says Hi, Mike. I love your videos. Thank you. I'm just getting into POTA. Yes. And can't figure out how to log FT8 QSOs. Can you help me out with that? Would you believe that I could? So I did a POTA activation where I did single sideband and FT8, and it's a threefer. And I wanna show you how to upload all of these logs to make life easy. Now you might not have to do all these steps, but I figured showing how to do a threefer would make it beneficial for even more people. So let me show you how to do that. So here we can see I have an activation for Parks on the Air from March 2nd, and this is a threefer where I did single sideband, but I also did FT8. So how do we get all of that information to the Parks on the Air website? Well, the first part we're gonna do, I am going to export, I'm using Polo in this case. We're gonna go to Operation, Manage Operation Logs, and then I'm gonna export these three files. And we'll just airdrop that to my MacBook Pro. You can email these files to yourself, however you're gonna transfer these files, but I'm gonna take them from my portable computer and put them on my main computer here in the house. So now I have all those single sideband files on my main computer. The FT8 logs, however, we need to go to WSJTX, go to File, Open Log Directory, and we're looking for this WSJTX underscore log dot ADI. Now, we want to transfer this to whatever computer you're using. Uh, you can simply, if this is the computer you're using, you can just copy this and save it to your desktop. But I need to share this to my MacBook Pro here in the shack. So we'll do that now. So now that I have all the files where they need to be, which is on this computer, let's take a look and see what we need to do. So I'm going to open up Finder on Windows. It's whatever your file explorer thing is. And these are the four files that I just imported into this computer. So we can see we have the three files from my single sideband and we have this entire uh, WSJTX log. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag those to my desktop. Now these three single sideband files already exported with all of the appropriate park information. But the FT8 log we need to edit a little bit. So I'm gonna open this up and you can presumably do this with any logging software. Now, when I say logging software, I'm talking about like an actual logging software that you're going to use as like your main logging software, not a portable logger like Polo or Hammers or something like that. Rumlog NG, Aether, MacLogger DX, Ham Radio Deluxe, N3FJP, those types of logging softwares are what I'm talking about. Um, but I want to just open this up in a logging software and I want to highlight just these that are dated from. Uh, March 2nd for me and then I'll go to file export and I want to make sure I select the only the QSOs that are selected and we'll call this k8mrd at us 3019-2025-0302 and I'll just save that to my desktop so now I have just the FT8 QSOs from that day. And I made a file out of it. I can just delete this one now. So now we need to do a little bit of copying and editing. So I'm just gonna copy this file and make a new one. And I'll rename it. And I'll just change the park number. to 10509 and then I'll make another copy and I will rename it 4417 but we still need to edit these two slightly because they're the parks on the air uh, website will just show these as duplicates so if I right click on this and hit open with 
and then I'll just go to other and I'm going to open it with a text editor right here. And all we have to do is just change something about it. So just next to OS 10, I'll just put a one. Okay. And then I'll do the same thing with this uh, file and we'll call that two. Okay, done. So now basically what that did is made these three files ever so slightly different. So now we can hop over to the Parks on the Air website, make sure you're logged in, hover over your call sign and go to My Log Uploads. From here, we can click in this Upload Activations box and here's all the different files. Now we have six because we have three different parks and two different modes of operation and I can just upload all of these just like that. Didn't get my call sign for a couple of these, that's okay. We can just add that in. So it didn't see the other parks even though I renamed them, but that's fine. We can just put uh, US-4417 and US-10509. So we have three FT8 logs and three single sideband logs. Go ahead and check these boxes and hit upload file for validation. And then they'll start doing their magic down here. And there we are, just like that. We see 70, 70, and 70 for the single sideband. And now we have all three parks that have 18 of my FT8 contacts. So there you are, and like I said, if you're at a, if you're just at a single park, you don't need to go through all those extra steps of duplicating and editing the files and things like that, but you still do want to isolate just the files, or just the contacts, rather, for that specific activation if you have multiple contacts in your WSJTX other than uh, just your parks on the air activation. So hopefully that helps. Thanks so much for writing in. This next question just kind of pulled at my heartstrings. Yeah, I do actually still have those. This came from a review I did of the Zygu, Shegu, Sigu X5105. This viewer writes, I have symptoms of arthritis that are very severe. Are these buttons easy to press? Do they take much force? Is the tuning as rapid as with the dial? I can't use dials because of my hands. So that VFO might be uh, a little bit tricky. This is why I'm considering this radio as I cannot handle the dials on the ham radios, but I badly want a ham radio. Thank you. So I've already responded to his comment. Um, I'm really just reaching out to you guys um, that have arthritis. Like this is a thing, you know, we're, we get older, stuff happens. So it's hard for me to answer this question because I don't have arthritis yet. It does run in my family though. So as my luck would have it, I'll probably get it. I mean, to me, these buttons are soft and, and rubbery. They're not hard to press, but you know, it, I can't gauge another person's um, pain. So in, in my response to him, I suggest, and we don't know his budget. Uh, this is a relatively inexpensive radio, 500 bucks or so. Um, I suggested uh, something like, assuming he wants QRP radio, something like the IC705 that is mostly uh, touch driven and even the power button is, is pretty darn easy to push. So um, this is really just, I'm asking you guys for help for this guy that, that may suffer from, from some severe arthritis. What radios do you use? What, any, any, any info, tips, tricks? Uh, how, how do we help get this guy on the air? That's that's the main goal. Do any of you have arthritis and have the X5105? And what are your feelings towards it? Um, I don't know. So there's my public service. Um, hopefully Scapegoat Solidarity uh, will see this. I'll, I'll go back into the post and, and mention that uh, we're talking about this on this episode. So if you guys have any comments... Um, really those that actually have experience with this, or maybe you have a family member that's a ham that has arthritis, you know, what, what can we do? What can we say about this? I, I think this is a pretty easy radio to use, but again, I can't judge a guy's pain. So I have no idea. So thank you in advance. Any of you arthritis sufferers with any, uh, any experience you might have. And lastly, we get to help a viewer choose on one or two or Maybe a bunch of antennas. Let's check it out. 
So this viewer writes, first off, wanted to say thanks for all the help you've given to so many hams and for the content that you've made for us. Thank you. When you mentioned your reaction to your first DX, it reminded me of mine with a similar reaction. It was something like, ah, oh my God. And yeah, Satan did that too. <laughs> it's, uh, it's still just that much fun. At home, I have a par NFED's 20 meter NFED half wave hung up in a tree in the backyard and I've been wanting to get a band or two added on. A while back, I did have a Buddy Stick Pro, which I used for all the frequencies, but unfortunately I had to sell it. Man, getting rid of an antenna, I could, I could, I could only imagine. Attached are some photos of the backyard, and I wanted to know if having a 15 or 17 and a 10 meter NFED half wave or whichever bands you think are worth getting, they're all worth getting, every single one of them, along with the 20 meter, would be a better option than having the all band going around the backyard horizontally. Is it ideal to have multiple NFED half-wave antennas touching each other? Probably not. Um, they can be pretty close. You might have to change the tuning of them to some degree uh, just because of the way uh, antennas react with, well, everything. Um, I would assume no, but the signal would probably transfer over to the wire of the incorrect length and affect SWR performance. I mean, if the wires are physically touching and they're not um, insulated, yeah, that might that might uh, end your day. Uh, as for the all band, I don't know uh, uh, how to practically have it set up off to the side by the neighbors might be the only way. By the way, I connect coax to the antenna when I go play radio and disconnect it so there's no lightning risk to the house. Greatly appreciate any tips and recommendations that you might have. Um, says these are like single band and fed half waves. Um, but then he's also looking at this 80 through 10 uh, par and feds. So and then here, here's his lot. We can see just here is 75 feet, and then presumably he has more land over here. Here's some other shots with his uh, 857 there. So I'm not sure if he's just like backyard portable, but he's got all kinds of natural antenna towers back here. Uh, so you should have no problem putting up a wire. Um, maybe somewhere other than the fence would be a good idea, but... Um, he talks about uh, getting them up in the tree might be uh, difficult. I think I missed that line. Shooting it up 65 to 75 feet in the air might be tough to me. If I have recommendations on how to do that, um, so he's going to have to think about going around the wooden fence. So you have options. You already have uh, a 49 to 1 antenna. So you could actually just add more wire to your existing, assuming it's a 49, uh, 49 to one NFED half wave. Uh, I personally use 18 gauge poly stealth wire here for my 80 meter NFED half waves. Uh, you could just solder on more wire to that, make an 80 meter NFED half wave and use something like this Arborist throw line. This is from Weaver and it's basically a bag with a hundred feet of like cord that's specifically made to go into trees without getting caught up and then i i like the 12 ounce weight i have gotten this up about 50 feet um it, it's a challenge to get it up that high um get it as high as you can and throw the rope over the branch tie the wire to it string it down you might need to throw it over another branch and just kind of keep fishing it over the trees until you get it out there i wouldn't worry so much about you know is it going this way and then that way whatever get it up that's the most important thing you could try that par n feds 80 through 10 n fed half wave um you know just buy a new antenna that's already made sure um you could also though think about a dx commander you were i think he was asking about trap verticals as well but this is the dx commander expedition and i have made this to where I actually have seven bands out of this, all resonant, no transformers, no nothing. It's just coax goes in here, wigglies go out the antenna. And I have this, I did a whole video on this, but each one of these screws here or wing nuts is a different band. So um, here's the coax and that feeds, I feed it underneath so I can use this top connection to put another radiating element on. So I have 20, 30, 17, 12, 40, and 10 meters, but I also get 15 meters off of the 40 meter element. Now, there's all kinds of different DX Commander antennas. They, he makes a couple that'll do 80, 
Uh, he makes smaller ones that have less bands. This is the Expedition that's more made for portable, but could be a great option for a vertical to have out there. Um, you got you got plenty of land to put up an 80 meter end fed half wave. They're about 132 ish feet. Um, I have two of them here. I get all the bands, so 80, 40, 20, 17, 15, and 10 are all resonant. I don't need to use a tuner. And on like 30 meters and 12 meters, I'll use my radio's internal tuner just to kind of sweeten those up a little bit. So like, and even six meters I can get. It's not very good, but I have, with the tuner, I can tune it. Um, so really 80 through six with one antenna, uh, that's the way to go. But if you wanted vertical, DX Commander all the way. Um, I think my buddy Ryan has, I think it's a Hustler trapped vertical something or other. And we use that quite often when we're just hanging out in his garage, having some cocktails and making contacts. That could be something to look into. Um, you got all kinds of options, man. But I would I would personally just rock a single 80 meter end fed half wave or the DX Commander or both. You got room. So hopefully that helps answer your question. And thanks so much for writing in. And guys, if you have amateur radio related questions for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at iCloud.com. I would love to hear from you. And until next time, we'll see you again on another episode of Ham Radio Tube. 73, y'all.